Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I have a little bit different kind of tutorial for you today. I got a request um, after I did a flip through of this beautiful journal to do a tutorial showing you how I used this vintage book for the cover and, and what I had to do and, and how I designed it. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I have quite a few videos that show like how to do the three pamphlet pamphlet stitch and sew signatures in. So I don't think we're gonna go over that today, but we're gonna focus basically on the cover and, and how you get it ready and all of that to then sew in your beautiful papers. So these papers are from Sylvia with Las Mimes Amores. She has a wonderful um, Etsy shop. I am on her design team and this was my big journal project for August for her. But if you're interested in these specific papers, these sweet envelopes, um, I will link her Etsy shop for you in the description, okay? All right, so basically, um, when I'm making journals, I do a couple of different things. If I want to use a vintage book for the cover, you know, I go, I go through my massive collection and I start picking them out and, and everything kind of then goes around the size, you know, that, that, that original book is. Um, but I think you guys also know I make lots of journals where I, I, um, use chipboard or other types of cardboard, those types of things, even sometimes like a cereal box or a jello box for a little one or things like that, and completely cover it with paper, right? But some of these books are just so beautiful, you know, and they, and they make a great journal cover. So I also do that kind. And this one was a geometry book um, from the 1940s. I want to say it was like 43, but I can't remember. And I didn't write it down. So um, I just went through my vintage book collection that I have for journal making and picked a few to show you that some have really small spines, right? And they're not very large books. And it's kind of how this geometry book was. And it just has two signatures. Now it has gotten quite fat because of everything I've put in there. But you know, one like this, this little one, at most I would put two signatures, but I might even just put one. Okay. But then of course, as we get into some of these larger books, you know, I may do this one, three, you know, something like that. I have some that I've done five, seven, you know, just really depending on the size of the book. This is another one that might just be a one or two. And this is a large one. So this would be kind of fun. And you could, um, it's a golf book. <laughs> um, but even like the end papers on this one is so pretty. Um, so again, depending on what the end papers look like too and what's going on, you may leave them or like I did with this one, I covered mine with some of the papers um, from Sylvia. So again, lots of choices on what you're gonna do. Today I'm gonna show you how to take apart this little fella and how we're gonna um, prep the cover. So I hope that wasn't too much information, but at least got you started. So when you're taking apart a book, um, there are different ways. And of course, when they're old like this, let's see what year this one's from. This is from 1953. They're actually a little bit easier when they're older. Um, but I hope you guys can see on the camera. Um, what I want to do is I want to slit the paper right here to kind of gut it to get these pages out so we're left with just the hard cover and there's other videos I'm sure showing you how to do this I'm just going to show you my process and when it pulls apart like this look this one's almost just even tearing and I barely tugged it you know I, I tend to just very carefully take my um, X-Acto knife and start cutting through. Now, you'll quickly find that it's not just paper holding it together. Um, and there's, I don't know what that, that's called, but fabric, um, sometimes there's fabric. This is kind of a, a meshy kind of almost, uh, I can't think of the word I want. Um, Kind of like that tape that has all the crisscross on it. I guess mesh was a good word. What you want to be careful though is not to cut through this canvas on this side. 
So again, I just am really careful. I go with hopefully shallow as if possible strokes um, to just kind of get through that. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So now that is free, and um, you can kind of see what I was talking about. Um, they, they did that you know, to really reinforce it and to make sure the book, all these years later, hasn't fallen apart yet. And here I am tearing it apart, but that's okay. So now that you're at this point, you might even be able to go from this side, and I'm holding it in a different way than I normally would because I'm trying to show you guys on the video but your your exacto knife should be able to slice just right through it and now we have something that looks like this and sometimes it's a little straighter or neater and sometimes this happens it's all fixable it's not a big deal um, even if you cut through here there's ways to repair it um, but hopefully that won't happen too often. So now we have this beautiful um, set of book pages, and this was actually a children's um, poetry book, so I'm sure I'm gonna find something really special to make with this. I may even use some of these to make some neat cards or journaling cards and things because they have, because there are some really fun images and of course, sweet words. Two big biscuits, one cup of coffee, going to Augusta, black and dirty. <laughs> That's the locomotive poem. Okay, so set these aside. Don't throw them away. They're they're wonderful to craft with. Okay, um, so now I'm going to kind of clean it up just a little bit. Um, I don't need to cut all of this out, but like this is some really thick glue right here. Um that I just wanna, I don't want that hard piece in there. Now, now is where I have to make the decision, am I going to just cover this with some paper? Like what, what kind of condition is it in? Am I gonna use a piece of fabric to help reinforce this part of the spine? On this one, I was getting a lot of cracking and I don't wanna pick on it too much. And so I did use a piece of fabric, um, you can see little pieces of it, which I kind of like. I like that look, that frayed look. Um, I did use a piece of fabric to make sure it didn't fall apart. This one is actually listed in my Etsy shop, and I don't want to send it out into the world unless I feel very confident um, that I've prepared it and it's going to be okay. So for this one, I'm going to do, I'm grabbing my fabric. I didn't have it sitting here with me. Um... I'm going to choose a piece of fabric that I want to reinforce this one with, and I, I definitely think it could, it could use that. Other books might be strong enough that I would just bring maybe paper up to the end, and then of course we're going to have um, a piece of cardboard. I'll show you that part to, to reinforce this part of the spine, but um, you know it just it just depends. It depends on the state of the book and where we're at. So I buy remnants of fabric. Now, if you're buying vintage fabric and some of these are, I really encourage you to really pull on it and test it and make sure it's not dry rotted or something because you've just defeated the purpose um, of lining it with a nice piece of fabric if it's going to fall apart as well. And, um, you know, different places you can buy fabric remnants and um, they aren't as expensive, in my opinion, as unless you find a really good sale like at Joann's or something. You may also have um, linens like sheets, pillowcases, or fabric in your home that will work. And sometimes fabric will tear. This one isn't wanting to. Um... So see what you have, work with what you have, and, um, you know, make, make it work for you. Um, I have given a lot of my um, linens that I've collected through the years in different size beds, like, you know, crib sheets and twin size beds and all those things you have maybe when your kids are growing up, but I've donated a lot of those and also... 
I have young adult children that need things like that. So I don't have any to tear up currently, but that's also something you can keep an eye out for, like at your local thrift store are um, linens and things like that that you could use in your junk journals. Okay, so this is not cut perfectly or evenly, and that's okay. Um, I need it to be approximately the height of my journal. And this little fella, this book is a small book. It's um, almost six and three quarters in, inches in height. Um, so I want my fabric to be right about that same, same height. And I am gonna try to cut it sh um, straight really quick. Okay, and again, a lot of this you're not even gonna see. You may just see little tiny pieces of it hanging out because we're gonna line this with some paper too. All right, so let me just cut this. Now, you are gonna need some kind of um, fabric glue, and I don't have the original bottle that my Fabrifix came in, but that, that's what I'm using in this um, Sugar Bell bottle. And um, if you're interested in the adhesives that I use or even these little dispenser bottles, they're all in my Amazon storefront and the link will be in the description of the video if you just want to go and see what, what I'm using and what I'm crafting with. Um, Okay, but you definitely need an adhesive, a glue that will work with fabric, and this will do fabric to paper, fabric to fabric, ribbon to paper, fabric, paper to paper. I mean, a lot of people just use it as their glue, so there's lots of choices. I made this four inches wide. You could go wider, you could go a little more narrow. Again, personal preference and what you want it to look like. And all I'm going to do is use my Fabrifix glue. Um, I don't use this as my primary glue all the time, mostly because it really does get my fingers sticky. And I'm not a big fan of sticky fingers. Um, and it may just be because I'm messy. I don't know. But um, just a uh, disclosure, it does get your fingers a little sticky. So I'm going to be generous with my glue. And I'm mostly going to just be adding the glue to, I hope you guys can see this, to these two sections. Let me put just a touch right there, but I'm gonna be adding um, another piece for the spine and some other things right on top of this fabric and it is all gonna get sandwiched in there. So not too worried about that section at all. Okay, and obviously I didn't even come out as far as my fabric does. And um, see what I mean about getting your finger sticky? I am gonna use, I'm gonna use a piece of just paper I have to help press that down and not get it all over my fingers. How does that sound? Um, you just wanna press this down. And again, we're gonna be layering other things on top of here, so it isn't gonna go anywhere, but you just wanna smooth it out. And I could have come further on this side, I may run another bead of glue down there now that I have it on here. But again, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay. Oops, if I keep that laying on its side, it will um, be easier for it to come out. I wanna make myself, I've seen videos on it, um, one of the little holders that you make to store your glue bottles like this, and apparently they don't, the glue doesn't all run out. I don't know, I'll let you know if I get around to doing that and how that works. Um, and some people then even decorate them up really pretty to be on their desk, so you know, I'm sure I'm gonna have to do that too at some point. All right, I'm gonna save that to you again. All right, so now we have a piece of fabric that is gonna help make sure that if, with use and time, if this starts to get, it, it looks like it's actually in pretty good shape, but if it starts to feel a little tired, we have that piece of fabric that's gonna help. Now, I did print out a few pieces of paper, different percentage sizes, <laughs> to get one kind of close to what I need um, for these panels. I could leave this paper. It's pretty, it has a nice color to it, but I'm gonna do it like I did the, the one that, that I was asked to, to show in demo. Um, so 
this looks like about the right size. I want to say, okay, this is the perfect one. I just threw the images um, into one of my um, programs. I think this was Canva and just resized it and printed it so that um, it would be closer to the size of this journal. These papers that you get um, from Sylvia, if you buy them on Etsy, you know, come in closer to that eight and a half by 11 or A4 size. And so you can, a lot of times you don't even have to throw it into a program. You can just, with your printer, say print it at 70% or 60% or whatever. But I was trying to be a little more precise, but it doesn't matter. Get yourself a piece of paper <laughs> and we're going to layer it in here just like this. Now, now is your time. If you do want this to be inked, go ahead and whatever paper, you could use scrapbook paper, um, just a solid piece of card stock, any digital paper, anything you want, if you're gonna cover, cover this up. Now, I will say, if this was really gorgeous in papers with a pattern and colors, I would not be covering it up. I'd wanna see that in my journal, um, but, this one, I want to see this pretty paper. Now, when we go to glue these down, you, I'm going to want to use the Fabrifix glue on the portion that's going to be sticking to the fabric. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it on the whole sheet um, because it will glue just fine paper to paper. So then I know I have what I need. Now the side, this the side that is going to go paper to paper, I you know I'm just doing a really thin thin bead where it's going to be on the fabric. I'm going to go just a little bit thicker. But again, we shouldn't have any problem with this sticking and staying. And I'm going to bring it not quite to the edge, just so you can see a little glimpse of it, and you'll get to see some of the fabric too. And it's anybody's guess where my bone folder has gotten off to. Here it is. I'm gonna use that to help smooth this down. And you could have let this dry a little bit <laughs> in between the layers, but it'll be okay if you are in a hurry like I am and just wanna put it down. And then when this dries, it's going to be nice and solid. So there's not a lot. When you have a, a vintage cover like this, if you like everything about the cover, there's not going to be a whole lot of designing, you know, on the outside. Now, this one is plain. Just line this one up real quick. This one is plain compared to where the geometry book, you know, had words on the front. Um, so honestly, if you want to, you could do a make a journal topper to affix, and because this is that canvasy material, I would use the Fabrifix, you know, to to hold it there if you like this blue color and you just want to leave it looking really vintagey I think that's nice something else that could be fun is to put a closure so we could do a closure that wraps this way we could do like a fun button with twine or ribbon and that would kind of decorate the front up so lots of possibilities there just depending on you know what you're thinking for your aesthetic now, the other thing you need for a cover like this is we do need a spine reinforcer. Is that, is that the right term? I don't know, I'm making up terms here. A spine reinforcer. So you do have to figure out what is the width of that spine. I don't know if you can see on camera, but I can see, you know, it, it um, <clears throat> excuse me, so I'm gonna just measure that, but you can just get right in there nice and tight. And this looks like it is three quarters of an inch. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. Yeah, I'm gonna go with three quarters of an inch, or we could say probably two centimeters within there. We're gonna go three quarters of an inch. 
And then the height, I want it to be, I'm gonna go with six and a half. So it's gonna have it nestle, hopefully, right in here and right underneath the little pieces of the, the um, cover you see. So three quarters of an inch by six and a half. You have a couple of options you can use. I am going to find a thin piece of chipboard and cut it to that measurement, and then we're gonna cover it with something pretty. So, I did not plan this part. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm just over at my paper trimmer, and I'm gonna use some chipboard from the back of a pad of scrapbook paper. So I will be right back with you guys. I haven't left. So I said six, and I want it to be three quarters of an inch. So again, just a piece of chipboard, and I cut it to six inches, but we're gonna now trim it down to three quarters of an inch, and we're gonna see if that fits in there without causing any issues. And if it does, great. If not, we'll, we'll make it a little skinnier. Oh, I did six instead of six and a half. Well, there you go. <laughs> Let's see if I've got the width right. The width seems perfect. I'm just gonna have to cut another piece. So what you don't want, if it's too wide and it won't fit down in there, it'll make your cover buckle kind of funky. So if you need it to be wider, you know, make it wider or more narrow. But that fits really nice. So I'm going to make it six and a half. <laughs> oh goodness. Let's see, six and a half and three quarters of an inch long. One, I think I got it here. My really big trimmer does not like doing anything under about an inch. It acts a little bit crazy. So I may have to trim this one off. Let's see how I did. Now, I am going to wrap this. I don't have to, but I'm gonna probably wrap it with some pretty paper, because you see it a little bit. Let's see what I did on this one. Yeah, see how you can see it just a little bit? And it's kind of nice that it coordinates with the journal. So my watch is telling me I haven't walked yet today, or walked enough yet today. The white, or, you know, I don't really want to see that. The white might be okay, but I'm going to cover it. We're going to make it pretty, which is going to make it a little more bulky. So, if you are really, really snug and getting this in here, you may want to cut it down just a sliver. Because what you don't want is it to be too bulky. Mine is fitting in there really, really um, snugly. So, snugly a word, we're gonna take just the tiniest of slivers off to account for, when I say tiny, it was tiny, just to try to account for the paper we're gonna wrap around it. I think I need that right now. All right, let's clear off our workspace and find paper. I don't know if any of these what height they are and if they're tall enough. Uh, I don't wanna I don't want to make my life difficult. We'll use this piece over here. I just folded it in half, but it's okay. All right, that'll give me enough room to wrap this. So kind of just think how you, we're gonna wrap it almost like a present, right? And um have it ready to go. So couple of different options. You could cut this piece of paper first. I don't want to run back over to my big trimmer yet again in the middle of this video. I try to avoid doing that. But you do want to use a wet glue like um, or probably a glue stick would be okay but don't don't use your your like score tape on this because what you don't want to have happen <laughs> is when you're sewing in your signatures later your needle happen to go through that tape, it gets really sticky. The glue will dry and it won't be sticky. Okay, 
so we are honestly just going to wrap this. I am going to, I went ahead and glued it down to help give me a little bit of a guide to cut somewhat straight. Okay, so we're wrapping. I am going to miter the corners. I'm looking for my little bitty tool that I like to use. I need to clean up my craft room, ladies. It is a little bit of a mess. Okay, even on something little like this, to get rid of some of that bulk, if we cut off the corners, it will help us. So I'm gonna do that. And again, this whole part is a little optional, you know, not, not reinforcing your, your journal, but if you wanna wrap it, if you wanna use a piece of, like you could do craft card stock and maybe a couple of layers to get it thick enough. Um, you could print pretty paper on a heavy duty card stock, or again, glue a couple layers together and not wrap. Totally your choice. Okay, just gonna wrap it. And if you don't want it to overlap so much, we could trim that off, but I think it'll be okay. And then let's work to get these corners neat, if possible. Again, I didn't, I don't have the same amount on both sides, so we'll see. You're not gonna see this part though. This is the part that's gonna get glued down. So you just don't want it like bulky and bulging on you. I'm just kind of inching those over just a little bit. And this this paper was printed on like a 90 pound card stock. So again, it's got some heft to it. Now before I glue it, I'm just gonna one more time double check that I didn't add too much bulk where it won't fit snugly in my spine. I want it down in there really good. Okay, now I hope you can see what's happening. With this in here, I now have a nice structure to my journal. It's not crushing at all. Where right now, see how it'll just kind of fold, fold in on itself? With this in here, we're going to be in really good shape. Okay? So, let me glue my cover to my spine and then we'll be in business so um i'm trying to think of what's going on around um my my, my crazy family right now actually things are a little quiet um my husband and our youngest daughter julie and then our oldest steven they um actually are spending part of the day together and going to see a, a movie that came out. I can't remember what movie they're going to see, but I wasn't really interested. So they let me pass and to stay home and, and craft. <laughs> Yay, it's a perfect Saturday for me. Um, but they're doing that. And we're gonna be really busy the next few weekends. Um, my anniversary is coming up and we have some fun events at my shop. We're having a scavenger hunt um, at the store. And we have, um, what do we have? Oh, end of season sale, that's coming up. We're gonna go back to the Fabrifix glue, guys, and glue this right into that spine. So I'm just gonna cover it. Um, what else? So we have that coming up and then we moved Julie back to college for her last year of undergrad. Yay, Julie. What else? Gosh, okay. oh, my husband's birthday. And then we're going on um, a little trip to the beach in Florida and to see my dad. So all kinds of stuff happening in the next few weeks. Busy, busy, busy. Okay, let's see. And still no word yet because it's only been a, a day or two on my son's job, but I'll keep y'all posted on that too. Okay, so I'm gonna really make sure I get this exactly where I want it. So I'm just gonna work it with my finger. I'll use my bone folder. And this is where you don't wanna rush and you don't wanna get it off um, crooked. You don't want it crooked. 
and you want to make sure it really has a chance to stick down. So you've got to give that, that adhesive, that Fabrifix, plenty of time to dry before you mess with this too much. So what I normally do, reaching over, I use some of these binder clips just to help a little bit. And I go ahead and put one on each end and I've pressed that down and I'm gonna let that sit. And I will probably, like if I did this later in the day, I'd, let, I'd wait overnight. Um, I'm doing this fairly early in the morning. So this afternoon I might take it off and be ready to work on it. And that honestly is how I prepare vintage book covers to be journal covers. Um, everything else is just like how I've, I've shown you how I assemble journals. Um, and get them ready to go. So I'll probably add some type of pocket or tuck spot on the front and back cover. This one I didn't because I didn't want to cover up that pretty paper. Um, but you know, a belly band, a, uh, a pocket, a tuck spot, something on the front and back covers. I'll prepare my signatures and I will probably do two small signatures just like I did on this one. I think it looks nice and I love the exposed spine look. Um, but again, there's tutorials. I have them on my channel. You can just search my videos, um, but other people do as well that show you how to sew the signatures in, right? And if you want to do an exposed spine or a hidden spine, this is prepped and ready to go for either one of those. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And if you want to do something, of course, to make the, the cover um, decorated or not. So all of those are just your choices as you go. So I hope you like this. I hope that this was helpful if you've not um, prepped a, a, a vintage book. But it really, your measurements, all of those things will just depend on what, what size your, your original book is. So I'm not going to give you the measurements necessarily for this one. But I hope you found it helpful. Please leave me a comment. If you've got any ideas or suggestions for me, let me know that too. Give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I will have more junk journal idea videos coming up and more one page wonders. So all kinds of things still happen in here in the Sparkle Studio. All right. Have a great day, everybody.